It's important that we know Holy Spirit is the person of the Holy Spirit. He is not it. We do not refer to Jesus as it. We do not refer to, refer to God as it. And shame on us for the years of not knowing and referring to Holy Spirit as the yes. Holy Spirit is eternal. Genesis 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the water. That's the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. He was here In from the beginning. Mark 10.1. This is when Jesus is being baptized. It says, As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. At the same moment that Jesus was being baptized in water by John, he was being baptized in the Spirit by his Father. That's when it happened. That's when Holy Spirit came to live in us. Not the baptism of the Holy Spirit, not the gift that happened on Pentecost, but when that spirit came down, he's in Jesus. Jesus is the transition. Now, we don't have him yet because the scripture, I want to show you scripture that says he wasn't given yet. But Jesus has him. The Holy Spirit is a person, a spirit person. And he was poured out on Pentecost. That's when he went from just being with Jesus full time to us. That's when we got him. That's when the baptism of the Holy Spirit came and we had that habitation. Before Jesus, he visited us. When Jesus went into the water and the dove landed on Jesus, he's now here on earth. God opened to heaven and that Holy Spirit come to earth and he rested with his son. John 7, 38 and 39, this is Jesus saying, speaking, Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. The actual original text, the word given is not in that. That was added later by man. The original text says, um, for the Holy Ghost, it was Holy Ghost, for the Holy Ghost was not yet. The time of the Holy Spirit had not come yet. It, God had his time, Jesus had his, his time, and Holy Spirit's time had not come yet until Jesus left. You know, left. we talked about how, what it might be like to live and walk with Jesus. We live and walk with the Holy Spirit. And they didn't. And we have that power available to us all the time. Not on occasion, all the time. And if you've accepted Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit. But he has a gift. He has a gift that he wants to give you, a gift of language. If you've studied another language, and most of us had, it's not easy. But he's giving us the gift of a heavenly language that we don't have to study. He just gives it to us. And if you don't have that, I know some people will make you feel like you don't have Holy Spirit. And that's just, I just can't find that in scripture. That just doesn't ring scriptural to me. It's something extra, it's that gift that he wants to give you so that he can pray through you. Because there's times when you just don't know how to pray. I mean, you're in a mess and you just don't know how to get out of it and, and he just does it for you. And he knows because he knows the Father's heart. He knows what the Father's plans for you are. We get all weirded out by the word tongue. It means language. That's all it means. So he's given you a heavenly language, the language that only God understands. And the beauty with that is the devil hears everything I'm saying to you guys right now. But if I start speaking in tongues, he doesn't have a clue what I'm saying. So when I'm praying, oh Lord, heal my baby, or what, he hears it. And so he can do everything he can do to stop that. But if I pray in tongues, he doesn't know what I'm praying. And I don't have to know because God the Father knows. And his spirit is the one who's sending it to me. And his spirit's the one doing it. And his word says if we ask for it, we, it's ours. And I know some people pray and ask and ask and ask. And, and I just believe you have it. If you've asked for it, you have it because the word says that. Somewhere in our wanting to do the right thing and not wanting to step out and, you know, not wanting to mess up, somehow we just can't get it out. There's lots of, well, there's churches that don't teach at all, and then there's lots of crazy teaching that, you know, say Jesus real fast over and over and over again. That's not, that's not speaking in another language. That's not speaking Spanish. That's not speaking English, and that's not speaking in God's holy language. 
But the words, if you ask, they're in your brain and you just open your mouth and you speak them. And I know sometimes you think when you're asking for that gift that you're just, your mouth's going to just open, it's just going to come out. You know, I used to be thinking, oh, what if I'm walking down Walmart and, and I just start going and listen, da, da, da. You know, I used to worry about that. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I mean, I have a thought. You all have a thought. It doesn't come out of your mouth unless you open your mouth and you say it. And it's the same with God's heavenly language. It doesn't just spill out unless you open your mouth and you say it. But I, I just, I feel it's important that we know we all have Holy Spirit. And then he has a gift that he can give you that helps you. And that's when the power comes from. That's when that stinky fisherman named Peter was able to preach and 3,000 people were saved.